uh, welcome in this session we will study about uh, reasons for ac generation and transmission so what are the reasons why ac is mostly preferred for transmission and distribution systems so we will start one by one due to ease of trans transformation of voltage levels simple transformer action because uh, uh, in in early stages of uh, energy development energy uh, technology development the transformer was very easy to develop and it's a very simple device uh, using this device voltages can be step up and transmitted at higher levels and if the voltages are increased for the same power the current will uh, less current will be required and in this way i squared losses will be reduced the conductor size will be reduced and uh, this is the the size of tower transmission line will be reduced so these are all the advantages and the voltage drop also will be reducing so these are all advantages of ac transmission but later on when technology develops uh, the dc transmission also become feasible and we will discuss this in detail in later slides alternating current is universally utilized both for generator loads and hence for transmission line alternating current is a natural current that is produced in transmission in generators uh, alternators so naturally generation of power is in alternating systems so that's why we don't need to do anything we just uh, connect a transformer and it is stepping it up and using a simple step down transformer we are further stepping down to distribution levels and we are supplying to some distribution network so this was very easy to do generators are remote places away from the populated areas that is the load centers so the uh, the the concept was um, we have to supply loads which are generally of uh, some factories and big cities and generation was used to be taken at remote areas like wind turbines like a uh, hydro power plants thermal power plants and from there the power need to be transmitted to remote ends so the need arises for the transmission system uh, transmission line and substations they are either pit head thermal or hydro the power plants are either thermal or hydro in both cases the generation will be in ac turbines drive synchronous generator are giving an output at 15 to 25 kv so the generally generators uh, output is kept at at 15 to 25 kv and there is uh, some economical calculations so this is the most feasible an economical generated voltage from the generators voltage is boosted up to 220 or 400 kv by step up transformers for transmission to load so further we can step the voltage up from 15 to 25 kv to 220 kv 400 kv even 500 kv 750 kv uh, transmission line is in use to reach the load at homes industry at required safe level transformer step uh, transformer step down voltage so once uh, when voltage utilization is at low low levels so you have to step down so this all were very easy in ac transmission hvac transmission is having several limitations like uh, line length uncontrolled power flow over for slash uh, low voltages during lighting lightly overloaded conditions stability problems fault isolation etc so these are the demerits for the hvac the advantage of hvdc is the ability to transmit large amount of power over long distances with lower capital cost and with lower losses than ac so there are some limitation for ac and this is the uh, advantage for the hvdc that we are reading we will discuss this obviously in detail in later slides hvdc transmission line allows efficient use of energy sources remote from load centers depending on voltage level and construction detail losses are quoted as about 3% per 1000 kilometers 
So as HVDC has less losses, so that's why it is preferred for long transmission line. In a number of application, HVDC is more effective than AC transmission. Example include under C cables where high capacitance causes additional AC losses. For example, 250 kilometer Baltic cable between Sweden and Germany, 600 kV, 600 kilometer Nordnet cable between Norway and Netherlands. In HPDC long power transmission without intermediate taps, for example, in remote areas. So uh, this is the advantage that you can just lay a conductor, a straight conductor. It would have very less transmission losses, and the that number of conductors will be required. Increase the capacity of existing power grid in situation where additional wires are difficult or expensive to install. So, the advantage of HVDC is we will discuss later. You can either use one conductor or two conductors for transmission of power. If you are using the same conductors, even that you use for HVAC, it is more possible, it is a possible to transmit more power using the same AC network. Power transmission and stabilization between unsynchronized AC distribution systems means this is the advantage of HVDC. HVDC also called as flexible coupling. It means that it is not required really to sync to uh, different uh, generating stations or to different islands or different, different countries because AC supply is converted first in DC and then connected. So it is providing yeah. flexible AC connectivity uh, between two networks. Connecting a remote generating plant to a distribution grid. Asynchronous operation possible between regions having different electrical parameters. So this is another advantage that if two electrical, two regions, for example one region is working on 50 hertz and another region is working on 60 hertz and it is not possible to connect these two using AC transmission but all these, uh, this, this is always possible to connect these two different regions with different electrical parameters using HVDC. Facilitate power transmission between different countries that use AC at different voltages and or frequencies. Reducing line cost because fewer conductors are required. Thinner conductors since HVDC has not suffered from the skin effect. In uh, AC system, you need three conductors, red, yellow, blue, whereas in uh, DC system, you don't need uh, in AC systems, we need, you already know that we need three, three conductors, uh, one for each phase, whereas in DC systems, uh, we need one conductor or two conductor that we will see uh, very few time. And uh, also in DC system HVDC, there is no skin effect, so conductor thinner conductors are required. Skin effect is basically the effect in which current tend to flow at outer side of the conductor near to skin because the inductance of the conductor is not uniform. It is more and near to near to near to the conductor central point and lesser to the skin of the conductor. So this this issue or this problem is not in HVDC. So the thinner conductor will be enough. Another op thing that need to be considered is HVDC transmission line uh, with HVAC related to cost. So here you can see the uh, line cost AC is shown in red color, whereas line cost DC is shown in blue color. So for shorter uh, transmission line, uh, HV uh, AC transmission line is less costlier. At some time, it become equal. But for obviously for the long transmission line, it's uh, it's really cheaper to go for DC system. And the terminal cost obviously will remain same in 
it's not depending upon the system itself so you can see hvdc terminal cost or substation cost is more than hvac cost so in that case uh, if the transmission line is very long in length like connecting to different countries or a wide uh, distance it will be economical to use hvdc system than hvac system comparison of hvac and hvdc system no restrictions on line length as no reactance in dc lines this is the advantage of hvdc that uh, there is no restriction of length you can supply as much long distance as you like hvdc can carry more power per conductor because for given power rating the constant voltage in dc line is lower than the peak voltage in ac line so hvdc obviously carrying more power because uh, you can see here the sinusoidal waveform is just going from zero to peak and then peak to zero so the rms value of sinusoidal waveform is less whereas us for the same voltage level the rms value of dc uh, system is high so for at the same voltage level even more power can be transmitted hvdc uses less current that's why it has low, low losses at the same voltages we have seen that it is using less current so it has less losses ac current will struggle against inertia in the line 100 times per second electrical resistance inductance reactive power so ac current has to go through you can see this line through this all impedances and this 100 time per second means uh, here they have considered frequency is a 50 hertz if they consider 60 hertz you can calculate so current has to pass through this inductance uh, as per the frequency 100 times or 120 times <coughs> whereas dc current uh, it will not have this resistance it's just like roll along the line opposing force friction distance as well as amount of power determine the cho choice of ac dc over ac so there are two factors that are deciding that which you have to follow because uh, always there is a calculation in this one they, you are taking feasibility uh, which so system is feasible here because the conductor size and the losses are less in dc whereas the cost of transmission substation is substation is high so there is always a con uh, comparison so uh, based on this comparison it is decided that uh, which station is economical here direct current conserves forest and safe land here you can see a dc transmission line you need only a one tower because it's at 500 kv whereas ac for the same power you need two towers and if there is a jungle here so you need to cut all jungles all trees to cutting the uh, this trees it is additional cost plus also it has a ne negative uh, impact on oxygen and nature so these are the disadvantages of ac transmission line here you can see this is the ac transmission line and if you use ac transmission you have to do this much cutting and it's getting more area whereas dc transmission line simply you can use two conductors here it's very simple and you can lay the dc transmission line that is very economical and you can save all this this is the advantage of dc transmission line so now you can see with dc transmission line you can grow more trees also the cost of uh, construction for the transmission line will be less in uh, hvac lesser corona loss than hvac at same voltage and conductor diameter and less radio infer interference so hvac uh, has this uh, property direct direction of power flow can be changed very quickly hvdc has greater reliability that is bipolar dc is more reliable than three phase hvsc dc require less insulation and optimize dc link has a smaller tower 
then optimize AC link of equal capacity. You can see the tower length and the size is small for DC and the less insulation is required for DC than AC system and optimize DC link has a smaller towers as we have discussed already DC line in parallel with AC link so these are all the different advantages and disadvantages of AC DC process and it has a thin conductors so this is all about HVAC and DC and we will move to our new topic